Father John Paul. I just came out of a press conference not too long ago with Father Lombardi of uh, the Vatican, uh, who was the official papal uh, spokesman, and uh, Father Tom Rosica from Salt and Light TV was doing an Eng English language translation of what Father Lombardi was saying. So I thought I would just give you a little bit of a behind the scenes taste of what was said. So I'll just give you the clips of the English language translation of Father Lombardi, uh, what he said. One point five million people. Um, as you saw, the people were stretched out along the whole beach of Copacabana, which allowed the Pope to pass through the crowds, but also to appreciate each of the stations as he came along. Some of you from the English-speaking press asked about the time that the Pope got off the Popemobile. That was at the station that was hosted by the parishioners of St. Mary of Copacabana Parish. That he got down from the Popemobile and went to greet them, and they were many of the volunteers for this particular beach uh, activity, and they also presented them at some point. The Pope appreciated very much how the stations made the story contemporary, that it was not just a story of a long ago, but it was linked to events of the present moment. And it was an extraordinary presentation for us here, but also for the world. Por mí, haciendo una pequeña reflexión sobre las World Youth Days, especially from Rome to today, the particular gift of this World Youth Day was how the Stations of the Cross addressed contemporary problems, the problems of young people, and they invited us all into a very deep reflection of these problems, linking them with the passion and the suffering of Christ. Okay. Last night were 35 garbage collectors from Argentina that work in the landfills, and they're a group that are very close to the Pope and have great friendship with them. The Pope had invited them to come to the World Youth Day. But as of yesterday afternoon, nobody knew where they were, in the middle of a million and a half people. So the Pope called some organizers together and said, go and find the garbage collectors and bring them up on stage. And they arrived on stage just as the ceremony was beginning, and the Pope went down to greet each of them when he saw them coming. The efforts of the Pope last night was to remember 242 young people who died in a terrible fire in the discotheque in Santa Maria exactly six months ago yesterday. This afternoon, Father Lombardi talked to the Bishop of Santa Maria who was deeply moved that the Pope would remember that accident. The Bishop was touched with the fact that the world was praying for them, but he also told us yesterday that yesterday the last victim who survived was released from the hospital and returned home. In particular visit are some of the key words or expressions of the Pope emerging, which have marked his pontificate till now, but they're finding a very clear expression in this particular visit. And one of them is the insistence of the Pope on the expression, the culture of encounter, as opposed to the culture that's a throwaway culture that discards people or marginalizes them. And he's encouraged that to presidents, to political leaders, to church leaders, and we saw that emerge today several times in his talks, both in the theater and then in the church. It ought to be a, a visit with the ruling class or the leaders of the upper class of Brazil in the theater today it turned out to be an extraordinary meeting of the Pope with the whole society of Brazil and those government authorities, people from the barrios and the favelas, families, young people, that really gave an example. Usually when such visits take place, you hear speeches or talks from mayors or governors or heads of state. But today it was really the little people, the ordinary folks that spoke to the assembly, and it was extremely representative of Brazilian society. So rather than being a visit of the high class or the ruling class, it was a visit with community leaders and with the people of this culture. The talk at the theater, an expression to rehabilitate politics. It's an extremely expressive the pair of words put together. It was received very well by the crowd. The second one was the necessity of a certain social humility, so that when we are in dialogue with one another, we don't talk down to one another, but we speak to one another in you know, almost a community or a communion. These are some of the words and key expressions that are emerging as the marks of this pontificate. Yeah.
they study tennis, or whatever the hall, within the city theater the gathering. There were representatives or leaders of the Presbyterian Church, the Afro-American Church, and the Islamic leader. The rabbi was not present today because of the Sabbath. He was present on Thursday at the meeting. There were also six ambassadors of different countries representing the diplomatic corps. Uh, the guests that were present, very representative of caregivers or those who are sick or those who care for them. There was a cardiologist who looks after young people, young children that are sick, a blind person, a pregnant woman, and also the, the girls that appeared at the end. When the curtain went up and all those girls came out, it was a very beautiful sight. The Pope was not aware of that. And as you saw him realizing what was happening, being invaded by these little angels coming around them, it was a very touching scene and the music that accompanied it as well. Bueno, después el Papa. When they arrived at the Archbishop's residence, the bishops went to lunch. There are about 400 bishops in Brazil. Almost 300 were present for the lunch. It was in a big hall of the Archbishop's residence. And the Pope had preferred that this not be televised live. He wanted to maintain a certain climate of familiarity and intimacy with the bishops. But we can assure you that the text you have received the Pope read every word of that text. That was the basic text of the day. The text, he, he acknowledged the presence of the emeritus bishops, the emeriti that were there, and said, you are not forgotten. You still have a role to play in the church. And that was greeted with much applause. This was not an ordinary talk today. This was a very lengthy talk, very significant talk, the most important talk, perhaps, of the pontificate thus far. And there'll be another one tomorrow to the Latin American bishops of Ceylon when he meets with them. And I want to call your attention to the fact that both of these talks are given in the context of World Youth Day, but they're given to the bishops of Brazil and the bishops of Latin America to set forward an agenda and orientation to inspire them and to let them know the great mission and work to which they're called. So yes, today's talk and tomorrow's talk are extremely important talks of this country. I'll to summarize the talk today and tomorrow in the context of World Youth Day language or World Youth Day addresses, but they're extremely important talks and they find their roots in the Aparecida document, which we've referred to several times. This has become kind of a lexicon for the Pope, for the imagery and for the theology that's emerging. And the talk that he gave today was extremely synthetic and very structured. It's a long talk and it takes time to digest. Et puis deux mots en français, parce que les journalistes français m'ont demandé de dire que le texte d'aujourd'hui et le texte de demain de Sénat sont des textes très importants du Pontifica, et le pape puise ses idées, il s'appelle aussi du document de la Parasida, la conférence des évêques qui a lieu ici en 2007, et c'est une conférence qui a fortement marqué ce Pontifica, et donc il puise, il continue à prendre ses idées, et puis à partager ses idées maintenant avec le monde entier. Here, a good and healthy laicity in the Pope's text is really not unique to Pope Francis. Already, Pope Benedict stressed that point several times in using it in the context of the necessity of a religious liberty. That religion doesn't come in to impose or to be on top of everything, but to be a very good contributing agent to the common good. The Pope John Paul II also stressed that several times in the language that the Church proposes, the Church doesn't impose. All of that, Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, Pope John Paul, find their roots in the conciliar document on religious liberty to be published in Bible. Today's talk to the bishops and tomorrow's talk to the leaders of Ceylon as a whole, today focused specifically on the church in Brazil, a strong emphasis at the end of the talk on the Amazon region. Tomorrow's talk is going to take that idea found in the Aparasuna document even wider as a continental idea and a universal church idea. Two other ideas that are emerging in the teaching and the homilies of the Pope are the idea and the importance of a synodal church, synodality, bringing people together in dialogue, listening to them, drawing forth ideas from the whole. And the second idea that's emerging very clearly is that of collegiality, a church that is very collegial, not just top-down, but a church that's in dialogue, and also a church that draws from the rich experiences everyone, of everyone who's a member of it, and a church that's founded on the idea of communion. Só complementando o que vamos ter que encerrar.